Abiogenesis is a, an hypothesis that says that life started in Earth many billions of years ago from non-living matter. Now, that was actually a very popular idea in, in, during centuries, that life could, could arise from non-living matter. So it, it was commonly thought that, uh, uh, you know, frogs could appear from slime or, or aphids from, from morning dew, things like that. Now, <clears throat> uh, all living organisms are form of uh, cells that are microscopic entities, uh, as, for example, are form of many repetitions, millions of them, different kinds of cells in, in our body. And you have single cell organisms as well, like bacteria. Um, uh, we look all very different, but actually at the molecular level, at the composition level, it's not that different. All of them are form of atoms, like all matter, all organisms are form of atoms, hydrogen, carbon, that's carbon represented here, hydrogen, nitrogen, the blue one, oxygen, and atoms combine into molecules, like the molecule of ammonia is this one, methane, that you probably know, water, oxygen, and two hydrogens. Now, in living organisms, the molecules are fairly complicated, actually, are not as simple as this one. So we have molecules like this one. This is a nucleotide, which is the building block of DNA, which is one of the main molecules of, of living organisms. So many repetitions of that give rise to this double helix that is of fame, quite famous, actually. And this is a building block of protein that is another one of the big or important molecules in living organisms. So many repetitions of this, many repetitions of this kind of molecule form uh, proteins that are, you know, another important class of molecules. It so happens that all living organisms have very similar uh, building blocks. They, they all have DNA, they all have proteins, and they are all based in the same building blocks. So this is, in principle, evidence of a common origin. But there is more than that. Now, um, how evolution works is that the, the, uh, all cells have a blueprint that is based actually in DNA. And the blueprint is copied as the organism reproduces from the progenitor to the new ones, to the daughter cells, to the, our you know, descendants. But the copy is not perfect. So there are always small changes from one version, the original version, to the next one. That gives rise to new features that with time accumulate and give rise to new species. That's how the evolution works more or less. Um, but this so happens that the blueprint is not erased. The blueprint is right over. So the original blueprint is often possible to make it up. From uh, analyzing the, the current one, you can, and comparing blueprints of different species, you may work out the original blueprint that is common to all the species. That has been done, and from that we can extrapolate how the last universal common ancestor, that is called LUCA, comes from the last universal common ancestors, it's, it's been called LUCA, uh, would look like. And it would look like a unicellular organism, as expected, that uh, would have such characteristics as to thrive in an environment that is consistent with the environment of early Earth, without oxygen, uh, you know, with the chemicals that were present there. So all this is consistent. But then that is as far as we can go analyzing living organisms. So we go down to Luca, to the last universal common ancestor, but uh, Luca was already a fully working cell. So how Luca formed, how it came from non-living organisms. Is that it? Can we do something else to work out whether a biogenesis is possible or not? Well, it could be that matter has a natural tendency if in certain environmental conditions has a natural tendency to form living organisms on itself.